Summer is coming up so fast, so today I'm kicking off that DIY season with my 30 best summertime DIYs guaranteed to bring some sunshine into your home. Up first is a super affordable, economical, and also super sustainable DIY because we're making this DIY cardboard popsicle garland. Step one is to grab some scrap cardboard or you can even use foam board that you have around the house and cut out popsicle shapes in the size that you want. I wanted to do mini popsicles for mine, but you could also do this with much larger shapes. Once I had all my pieces cut out, it was time to paint. So I did some red, some blue, and some white for a patriotic look. And then I used some painter's tape down the center of the white ones to create some firecracker or multicolor bomb pop popsicles. I let them dry and then I grabbed some craft sticks. Cut them in half, glued them to the back, and you've got some super fun popsicles. Then I used these sewing needles. I found a Dollar Tree, but you can also use a doll needle, just something long enough to put your twine through. You can use jute, white twine, or here I just had some leftover red and white baker's twine from Christmas. Now, how cute would this be with some fun summer colors? I absolutely love how this turned out and it's quick and easy to make. And you can save some of those boxes from the garbage if you don't recycle or the recycling if you do. This next one was a huge hit last year and they turned out so cute. So from Dollar Tree, you're gonna need paper straws, mini cups, and then some of these ping pong sized styrofoam balls that come in a pack of four. Start by taking a serrated knife and cutting directly down the center so you have two half domes. Then we're gonna take some hot glue and attach those to the tops of our cups. Once those are attached, we are going to decorate. So first comes the straws. I ended up trimming them down with some scissors and then I popped a hole in there so I could insert the straw. If you're afraid of it popping out, you could also add a little hot glue, but my hole was small enough that it held. Then it's time to decorate so you could leave them white or you could add some quote unquote faux syrup. I did some acrylic paint here. So I did some blue, some red, and I even got fancy on a couple of them and did a red, white, and blue motif to stick with the cups. Now the super fun thing about these is that you can use the regular color mini solo cups from Dollar Tree. I've seen them in blue and red and even green. So you can go ahead and make those summer snow cones if you don't want patriotic, but I love red, white, and blue for the summer and these are so adorable. If you're new here, hello, my name is Whitney. This is Whiskey and Wit, and on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. A huge hello and welcome back to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each week to DIY with me. And if you're not already a craft buddy, no worries. It's super easy to join us. Just hit subscribe down below. Make sure you have the bell clicked so YouTube will tell you when I post a new video, and then you can craft along with us. I'm starting to notice an early pattern with this video all around summer treats, and my favorite has to be s'mores. Let me know your favorite down in the comments. So I went to Walmart and grabbed one of these utensil caddies and you could get them really anywhere. I just liked this one because it had a blank side. I went ahead and measured it and then I also cut out this decal. It is free over on whiskeyandwit.com. Just size it to your container, press it onto the side and you have this super cute caddy that you can use to put everything in. You don't have to worry about dropping anything. I know if I like load my arms up with graham crackers and chocolate and everything, I'm gonna drop it on the way to the fire pit. Can't forget the marshmallows and this thing is good to go. On top of having this for yourself this summer, you could also make this as a great hostess gift, 4th of July gift. Really, if you need something to give to anyone, housewarming, you could customize it with their own last name, and then you could just leave everything in their individual packaging and they're ready to go. Another one of my favorite cardboard projects from last year is this super easy door hanger. This was actually inspired by the mystery box challenge when Courtney sent me that sign you saw in the center in my box last year. So I just grabbed a scrap piece of cardboard again. You could do foam board as well. And I cut out a little popsicle shape, also including the stick at the bottom. I painted the top white just so I could have a neutral base to work with. And then for the little popsicle stick, I started with a lighter brown and then I also buffed in some darker brown just to give it a two-tone look. Then it was time to give this popsicle some fun colors, so I decided to use blue, green, and purple. What I did is blue on the top first, green on the bottom second, and then I did the purple in the center. That just allowed me to make sure that my lines on the purple were clean. I didn't want to blend them together, but if you want to blend them, you can do them in whatever order you feel. Once I got all those colors on there, I let it dry, and then I went over first with a black paint marker to give it some dimension, just so it started to look more fun and whimsy. And then I took all three of my colors, mixed it with white, and then started adding polka dots in each section. This is one of my favorite painting techniques. I started doing it for Easter two years ago, and I have done it for so many different holiday scents because it is so fun. 
Once all my polka dots are on there, I'm going to use a white paint marker on top of the dried paint to create just a little bit of a bubble reflection. So you want them to go in a variety of different ways. Added some squiggles as well as some low lights with the black and highlights around that black original outline. And then your popsicle is good to go. Now, because this sign was part of the challenge last year, I added it. So this is optional, but I just chopped off the little embellishment that was on there and I cut out this Hello Summer on my Cricut. Now you could easily use rub on transfers or just omit the sign altogether if you don't have a Cricut. We're going to take some hot glue, apply it to the sign, and then use some hot glue on the back to create a really simple hanger. Just tie some jute twine in a loop, glue it on the back, make sure it completely sets, and then I'm using a cluster ribbon style to create a bow. So you are just going to cut strips, lay them out in a cluster or a mess, tie the center and you've got a little burst of color up at the top. Now this sign is going to live inside at my house, but if you wanna put it on your front door, you will want to either tape or use something else that won't melt in the sun to hook everything to the sign. So that's just an FYI, but this is so cute and so affordable. So this next one is a Dollar Tree DIY if you do it the way I did it, but if you don't wanna do the Dollar Tree plungers, you can also grab some dowel rods at your hardware store or even Michaels or Walmart, a bunch of places have them. I'm gonna start by cutting off the two ends of my plunger handle, you don't need the rubber part, and then I'm gonna cut them into three different lengths. Go through and sand them down so the rough edges are not going to poke me. And then I'm painting one red, one white, and one blue. You can see where we are going here with these. They're going to be fun little firecrackers. Now once those are all painted, I'm just using a little bit of this sparkly fun garland from Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to roll the tops, add some hot glue, and stick it down so it looks like the wick essentially of a firecracker. That's it. Tie it up with jute twine and these things are so cute and ready to go. Now, if you wanted a little bit more of a traditional Americana or even more of a rustic look, you can stain the three pieces and then go through with some painter's tape to mark off some lines. This doesn't have to be done a certain way, kind of go with your heart, do what you feel. I did some stripes at the top and the bottom, and then you can go through and paint those again in a darker red, white, and blue so it's a little bit more muted. And then instead of doing the sparkle on the top, I opted for some thicker jute twine from Dollar Tree to go on the top. And they are just really great for a tiered tray or inside a basket to add a little bit of patriotic feel without a ton of work. I absolutely love designing printable art that I can put in the frames in my home. And then I love sharing them with you guys over on my blog for free. So I have got a huge pack, nearly 30 files ranging from patriotic that you are seeing here. So a new one for 2023 is this fresh strawberry lemonade recipe style that you guys love. I also have lemon options. Like I said, additional patriotic. I even have a couple Canadian options for my Canadian craft buddies because I have heard you that you would love some Canadian. Canadian ones, so I did that for you. And I also have bees and a ton of different things, so check that out over on my blog. For this next one, you're gonna grab one of these Dollar Tree little trays, but you can also do this on a larger scale as well, but I just did it smaller for a tiered tray. I started by painting the entire thing white, and then I made a pink line down the left-hand side. Now my pink line ended up being too thick, so I ended up fixing it. And then I cut out this decal in a three by five size to fit my particular tray. But if you're using something bigger, you can cut it out larger. It just looks like handwriting. Then I'm gonna trim it down all the way down the side where it's all justified so that I can figure out where I'm gonna put the lines for my sign. Instead of drawing the blue paper lines, initially I wanted to mark it off to where the text was gonna be so that it looked like somebody actually wrote the pledge on this notebook paper. I'm using a fine tipped paint marker that is from Arteza just to go ahead and mark it. And you also wanna make sure that you're using either a light contact paper or a paper transfer tape to apply your decal here. Or if you don't have a Cricut, you can go ahead and write this out yourself. Then once it was all applied to my lines, I peeled it off. I added a little bit of gray down the left-hand side for the holes in the paper finish it off with some jute twine. And this thing you would not guess is from Dollar Tree, but it is so cute and it goes so great with my patriotic setup. 
I am so excited about a meetup that I have coming up in September in Fort Worth, Texas. There's a super fun event called Pinners, Texas, September 22nd and 23rd, and I will be there along with Courtney from Creative on the Chief, Jennifer from Little Bit of Calm and Crazy, and Shannon from The Daily DIYer. Not only will we teach a class on Saturday, but we will be around for the whole event and would love to meet you guys. So you can use the link down in the description to purchase any level of ticket that works for you. You can also use our code YTDIY at checkout and that will give you $5 off any ticket that you pick. So more information will be down in the description, but I would love to meet you in Fort Worth this fall. So check it out and let me know in the comments if you are already planning on joining us or if you're working out the details, cause I'd love to see you. This lemon charger is one of my favorite projects I have ever done and it's so easy, let me show you. You're gonna start with a charger, mine's from Dollar Tree, but you can get yours anywhere and then you want a lemon yellow color. I'm using this Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze and it was the best color I think for me and my vision. Then I'm gonna pull up an image of a lemon slice online so I have something to look at because I am not good at winging it. I need a little bit of visual guidance. So I'm gonna start by making a circle around the outside and then thickening up that line. Once that's done, we're going to mark the center and we're going to start to create the little embellishment pieces inside a lemon slice. So I'm starting by taking my wrist and just swirling it around to create a circle in the center, which I measured as you saw so that I could get the exact center. And then I am going to do lines straight out either way and then fill it in just kind of like a pie. Then we're going to do a curved edge around all of them, connecting our little spokes from the center. And it's really starting to look like a lemon. Then we're going to go around the entire outside and I first did white and it ended up being too stark. So I ended up kind of going back through on the edges with white mixed with that original chalk paint, that maize color, just to help kind of buff it out so it wasn't so stark. I also used that color around the top curved edges of the spokes to do the same thing, to essentially make that line not so harsh. Then using that yellow white mixture, I'm just adding a little bit of little zhuzhes out of the center. And then I'm also gonna go in with some more white to create three seeds. Overall, it's less than a 20 minute project and I love to display this every year on this plate stand from Dollar Tree. And if you're worried about it scratching, you can use some Mod Podge, but friendly reminder, this is now not food safe. I mentioned earlier that I really loved the whimsy look of the painting with dots. And so I decided to grab four Dollar Tree wood arrows and make some firecrackers. I painted one, blue, one red, and two white, and then I went through and added some white dots to both the white and the blue arrows. Then on my first white arrow, I did blue and red polka dots, and then on my second one, I decided to use some painter's tape to help me tape off the top to make that blue, and then add some red stripes down the center. Once all my paint had dried, I went back through with some paint markers to add some fun whimsy details. So on this one, I'm just doing dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash around the outside. I'm also using my white paint marker to add some bubble texture to the edge of all of my polka dots, and that really makes it pop. I did the same thing with a mixture of white and black on the blue red and this multicolored one. And here, there's no rhyme or reason, just do what you feel, polka dots, lines, etc. Then I took a piece of scrap wood and did a faux staining technique with some antique wax that I got at Walmart. This is the Waverly brand, but you could stain this, paint this, etc. Or you could also omit this if you don't want to add the Cricut decal. I just needed a piece to add my decal to, which this is a free one over on my blog. I just applied it with my paper transfer tape. Now you could get as creative as you want here. You could do four like I did here for the firecrackers. You could do a ton. You could do one firecracker. That's the great part of DIY. You can do whatever you are feeling the day that you make it. Once everything is hot glued down, I am also adding that Uncle Sam's sign to the front. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and some baker's twine to add a hanger to the back so that I can hang it up over a wreath somewhere in my house. Once that's ready to go, your sign is perfectly done. And this is also really fun if you have like a vendor show coming up or if you would like to customize some of these and sell them on Facebook Marketplace to make a little extra money this summer. When I think of summer and like vintage, I think of like 50s diners and milkshakes and malts. So I saw these dessert glasses in the kitchen section at Dollar Tree and thought they looked like mini versions of the little milkshake containers. So I spray painted them two coats of this satin silver paint and it dried matte, which was perfect. 
Then I grabbed just this little container of spackling from Dollar Tree and I started by adding a little bit of water as well as some white acrylic paint just to kind of brighten it up. Stirred it with a craft stick and then I put a little bit into just a Ziploc baggie and cut a diagonal like squiggle at the bottom and created a full piping bag. I then put it over the top of a little bit of styrofoam like we used earlier in those snow cones just to help the spackling sit up and once everything was full I added a little piece of straw that I had left over from those projects too and let that dry. Then for the remaining spackling I mixed a little bit with blue paint and a little bit with red paint to create colored whipped cream or ice cream however you want to look at it and I did it the exact same way. How cute are these? So fun and festive. If you're not already signed up and getting my Whiskey Craft Buddy emails, what are you waiting for? I send them out periodically, so I will not spam you, but it's all the best content to make sure that you don't miss it here on my channel. Sometimes YouTube gets wonky and you don't get all the notifications, so all of the updates will come to you via email right from me. So click down below, you just put in your first name and your email, and you'll be all signed up and ready to go. This next one, hands down, is one of my favorite Dollar Tree blanks that I did for summer last year, and it starts with these canvas bags. Now, if you get lucky and can find a bag that's blank, that's ideal, but if not, you can just go ahead and cut off the back panel of a bag with a design like I'm doing here, and then you're gonna want either two pieces of scrap wood, or you can also grab wood from Dollar Tree, paint sticks, or rulers also work well. I stained both of those for a separate project I didn't end up using them for, and then I measured the size of my opening. Then I found this awesome file on Etsy that I ended up cutting on just some black heat transfer vinyl. Quick reminder for that, you wanna make sure that you put the shiny side down. And if you have questions on how to use heat transfer vinyl or how it's different than adhesive vinyl, I have a full video covering Cricut materials, how to use them, how they're different. It can act like a nice little reference point for you as well to help with any materials questions that you have. Now, once that is weeded out, I'm doing a quick press on top of that canvas piece to get out any wrinkles. And then we are going to lay it down with the carrier sheet face up so that we can press it on to our canvas. I ended up pressing it for about 20 seconds each. My timer said 40, but I did about 20 seconds on each section. And then when it is cool, you can peel off that carrier sheet and then it's gonna be time to get ready to attach the wood. So I'm using the wood pieces to give me a guide to figure out where I need to trim it down. And then using some hot glue, I'm adding the two pieces of wood to the front. Now I ended up opting to add an additional piece on the top and the bottom, kind of like a bookend, just so then that way there was weight at the bottom so that it would hang flat. I also decided to add my hanger in between the first piece of wood for the top as well as the canvas. So I've got wood, canvas, hanger, wood. And the other ribbon outside of the burlap came from Michaels. The burlap is from Hobby Lobby. I like to pick up seasonal ribbons like this on clearance. I save them for the next year and you can get them so much cheaper. This just screams summer to me. It looks really cute on a wreath or on its own. And I really love this cut file. Like I said, this is not one I designed. I just found it and loved it. So I will link that down below if you wanna grab it and recreate it. This next one is a great gift for a housewarming, a bridal shower, engagement, all the things, or even make it for yourself. I grabbed a glass water dispenser as well as some rocks glasses at Walmart, and I started in Canva by creating a monogram. So C for the last name here, and I just wanted something simple with the laurels. Then I measured both my large water dispenser or drink dispenser, as well as my cups to see how wide my stencil needed to be. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, you could easily do this with stencils that you can find at Michael's or Hobby Lobby that are adhesive. A lot of them come in letters like this. And so don't worry if you don't have a Cricut to cut this out, you could do it with pre-purchased stencils. Then I'm gonna go through and backwards weed everything to create a stencil. So instead of getting rid of all the excess on the outside, I'm getting rid of what I wanna etch onto this jug. And I'm going to apply them with just some permanent scrap vinyl. This is a great way to use scrap vinyl. Then the magic happens here with this Armor Etch product. What I like to do is apply it with either a brush or a craft stick like this liberally, and then you can let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. It says three to five on the package, but I usually give it a little bit more just to make sure that it's etching in. Then you can go through and clean everything off. I would suggest using gloves. This was made a couple years ago before I really got stringent on using gloves with Armor Etch, 
But then once everything's rinsed off, this is dishwasher safe, really beautiful, and it's a very affordable gift that looks like you tried really hard, which I'm all for. Another something that could be a great gift or really practical for you is this Pyrex etched dish. Now, I always like to bring something to pool parties like dips and things like that, but I'm always forgetting my container. So here is how you're gonna be able to get it back. We're gonna use that same armor etch technique and I just made this in Canva fresh from Whitney's kitchen. I measured the side of my container so I knew how tall and wide it needed to be. And then I cut that out on some scrap vinyl as well. I'm gonna weed it the same way we did with that project before. So we're just getting out all of the pieces where we wanna etch, making sure to leave the inside of things like B's and P's and D's. Then I'm gonna trim it down and apply it right to the side of my Pyrex. Now this is the Pyrex brand, but I also like the Anchor Hawking brand at Walmart. And those two have etched for me. Not everything will etch, so you wanna make sure that you do a little test before you do the whole thing and get frustrated, because I've done that before. Also again, we're gonna use gloves to remove that cream after 15 to 20 minutes, some hot water, peel off that stencil, and then now it is totally food safe because you did it on the outside. You can take your dips, your cakes, whatever, and then people know whose container it is if it gets left behind. Or you could also do this as a housewarming gift, make something in there, put their monogram or name on it, and then just leave it for them to keep. Super quick and easy. This next one is for my bee decor enthusiast. This super cute beehive is really easy to make and you can make it with a lot of different things from Dollar Tree. I used one of these plastic cloches, but you could even use a vase or anything else that looks like this shape. Just something that will take hot glue will work perfect. Then I grabbed some of this decorative rope and just used some hot glue to wrap it all the way around the outside, adhering it as I went and making sure it wrapped all the way around to the top. I left the bottom black and then I made a little door and then painted the jute twine within black so it looked like the entrance to the hive. Then I finished it off with these cute little bee stickers that I got off of Amazon. I will link those down below. They are super fun and you can stick them to a ton of different things. This is great for a tiered tray or to sit on its own. And I've got a full video of bee DIYs including how to make those little honey dippers so check it out. I get a lot of questions from you guys about wreath making. And so here's one of my favorite summer wreaths I've ever made. I grabbed a Dollar Tree wreath form, spray painted that white, and then I grabbed 20 little clothespins, painted them blue, and then I did 28 red, 28 white. Hooking them on the side of that box made it so much easier to spray paint them all in one go and have them dry. Then I am just applying them one lower, one higher on two different rungs of my wreath form. And I just spray painted it white so it would blend in more with the colors. Then once I applied all of my blue ones, I'm doing six white, six red, alternating all the way around the wreath. Now you can get creative and do this however you want. This is just the process that worked well for me. Once I got them all applied and I had a nice little flag motif, I tied some burlap ribbon just to one of the back strands so I could hang it up. And then using hot glue, I added a little bit of foam scatter, just the white stars in a variety of sizes around just that blue area to really make it look like a flag. And this would also look super cute with yellows and oranges to make a sun instead. This door hanger could easily pass as something you bought for $45 plus, but I'm gonna show you how to make it with Dollar Tree items. So in the nautical section, they have these awesome wood tag cutouts. I just like to check the back to make sure they aren't spotted because that's the side I'm gonna use. When I got home, I did the back of one a navy blue, and then I did one in white chalk paint. For the white one, we are going to do the stripes on this one. So I used a piece of painter's tape. This is one inch wide. I taped off about the halfway point, and then I also did evenly spaced ones across the top. I wanted to leave the bottom white because that's where we're gonna put our decal, but if you wanna forego a Cricut decal, you could do the stripes all the way down the tag. Then I got this bald eagle design over on Design Bundles, which I will link for you. It's one of the ones that I didn't design myself. Sometimes when I find a really cute file, I just wanna use it and it saves me time to not have to do it myself. Cut everything out to the size that I wanted, and then I'm gonna apply it with my Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape. I also have an Amazon version that's the exact same as the Expressions Vinyl one, which I will link for you. This is one of my most requested links of all time because you guys see me using it and you're like, what is that transfer tape? Well, it is paper transfer tape from either either Amazon or Expressions Vinyl. I love Expressions Vinyl, but it's so popular, it comes in and out of stock 
rather frequently. So the Amazon one is more of a sure bet if you need it right now. Then I'm just going to manually place all of my other pieces. So this yellow nose and then the two different frames of the aviator. One is stars and blue. And then the other one is just red stripes over the white paint to create that flag look. Then for the stars portion of our sign, I cut out two inch wide stars just in design space. I just searched for the simple shape, but you could also find star stickers at Dollar Tree to use if you don't have a Cricut to cut them out. Then I'm gonna make a cluster bow for this one too. So we're gonna cut all of these strips. It's usually about six to seven inches long. I really don't measure them. I just kind of wing it. And then I'm going to lay everything out. The burlap is from Hobby Lobby and the rest of the ribbon is from Michael's. I love Michael's seasonal ribbon, especially if you can catch it on sale, it's a great deal. I'm gonna pinch all of the ends and dovetail them. This is something that I probably should have done before I tied it together, but nonetheless, it worked. It made it look a little bit more polished. Then I'm gonna glue both sides together so they hang and they don't move too much. And then I'm using some extra of that ticking stripe ribbon to tie off a hanger, but you could easily use Dollar Tree jute twine or whatever you have. Last step, add our fun little bow, and this thing is good to go. I love this sign so much. Red, white, and blue scream summer to me. That's how I like to decorate in my home, and I absolutely love the fun little bald eagle with the sunglasses. This one has got to be one of the easiest projects in the entire video, but it's super versatile. So grab yourself some of these mason jar like salt and pepper shakers from the kitchen section, and you can either leave them clear or spray paint them. For this one, I did white, but you could do literally any color. And then you're going to need some sort of adhesive sticker or rub on transfer. Here I am doing a B motif. So this is a kind of wall decal sticker. So I'm just cutting off the excess and applying them to the front. And that's as easy as it is. I've done these for Halloween with rub on transfers. You could do patriotic. I cream, whatever you can find, that's how you can theme them. Hey craft buddy, if you're still with me in this mega video today, will you do me a favor and head down to the comments and leave me a little sun emoji? That just lets me know how long you have made it through the video and I appreciate the support because it helps out my channel. So if you're still here, give me a little sun emoji. Also hit thumbs up while you're down there. That also helps my channel so, so much and let's get into the next project. I was on a massive hunt for a patriotic blanket to go on my blanket ladder and every single one I found was like $50 plus. So I decided to make a huge one myself with some scarves from Dollar Tree as well as the Target dollar spot. I laid everything out and I did bandanas for the two larger strips and then a longer scarf on either side to make it bigger. I used a blanket stitch with some white yarn to hook it all together. And you guys, I am not super well versed in sewing. And so if I can do it, you can definitely do it. You're gonna tie off your yarn so you have a knot at the end to catch and then go through your bottom piece of fabric. Then we are going to double them up and we're gonna go back through both of them to create your first loop. Once you have your first loop, we're gonna do the exact same thing again. So you're gonna go back through both pieces here and I left about an inch between each one. The closer that you go with the second stitch is going to determine how long your essential blanket stitch that stretches across the top will be and you'll see. Now pull it through all the way except for a little bit of slack and you're gonna take your needle and go back through and that is going to allow you to create the loop that we're looking for for this blanket stitch. Once you pull it through, it's gonna sit down how you want it to, and then you just continue throughout your entire blanket. This was a couple night project that I did while I was binging a TV show, and it was a great way to kind of zen out and just make something for much cheaper than I would have had it to buy it. I love how this turned out. The blanket stitch is super easy, and I will also link a tutorial down below that I use that is slowed down that will help you master it too. This one is for my watermelon craft buddies, but you could honestly use this technique for any type of decor you're gonna do this summer. We're gonna use three different color paint. We're gonna do red on the top of this Dollar Tree crate flipped over. And then we're gonna do the second rung of, or second layer, I guess, as this lighter green. And then the bottom is gonna be a little bit darker of a green to mimic what it looks like when you cut open a watermelon. Once all of my pieces were painted and dried, I went through and measured them. Now this is key because you don't want your letters to be any taller than your little rung of your crate. And Dollar Tree has two different sizes of crates. So you're gonna wanna keep that in mind when you're measuring. Make sure that you have the same kind as me or re-measure if you don't. Mine ended up being no more than three quarters of an inch high and four inches wide. 
I cut out those words on my Cricut as well as some seeds that I just searched under image and I knew I was going to hand place them so I wasn't worried. I'm also using the paper transfer tape to apply these on here and I go with the paper transfer tape because it is lower tack and it's not going to rip up that paint that I just put on the crate. I did a left justify but scooched it over a little bit to give me room for the baker's twine and this was a great addition to the watermelon tear tray I made for my mom. If you're eyeing those spoons, let me show you how to do those as well. These seasonal spoons are super quick and easy. And what I like to do is tape off the top with a little bit of painter's tape and then do my base coat. Here I'm doing white and blue because this first set is going to be patriotic. Now on the blue, that is done there. But on the white one, we're going to tape off some stripes and do red. So then that way we've got red and white stripes down the handle. Then for my blue one, I cut out one inch stars, just search the image star under shapes in Cricut Design Space, size it to an inch wide and cut them out and then hand place them. Now, again, if you don't have a Cricut, you could draw them on by hand or you could grab some star stickers at Dollar Tree. I put them on my little tea towel ladders, tons of different options and the color ad is great. For the watermelon look, we're gonna do it very similar just with different colors and we're gonna do a little bit of blending. So I start with some red and then I'm going to blend in that medium color green that we used on the book stack. And while all of this is still wet, we're gonna add a little bit of the darker green to the end and really buff it all out, kind of so it looks similar to a sunset, but you don't want it to be a harsh line. This is what it looks like when it dries and then I'm just hand applying some more of those seeds that I had left over from my cute little locally grown watermelon book stack. Both of these projects are awesome because you could customize them to whatever style you use in your summer decor. Just use the basic principles and then make it your own. Speaking of projects you can make your own, another one are these Dollar Tree arrow signs. I've been making these for years and I have so many different cut files that fit both this as well as the wood arrows you can find in the crafter square section at Dollar Tree. So it's as simple as painting it whatever color you want the base to be cutting out my file and then applying it with some low tack transfer tape I know so many of you have the full collection along with me and you make all of these when I have new files and the great thing is you can paint whatever color you want so you could go traditional white or like I did last year this pretty blue with the popsicle parlor and it doesn't just have to be patriotic you could also do lemonade like I did here or berries so all of these files are linked over on their own blog post on my blog and I will link it down below for you now I'm not big into nautical decor but I think this year I will be especially because we do have a pool now and so I grabbed one of these blank signs from the nautical section and trimmed off these little embellishments so I could use them along with this lighthouse metal cutout to make a fun little bathroom accessory so this crate was sent to me in a mystery box challenge last year but you could easily use a Dollar Tree one and just paint it white then I'm using Gorilla Glue hot glue because I really think it bonds well for both wood, metal, plastic, all the things. And then I'm taking my two little embellishments I stole off those signs, I just cut them with regular scissors, and I'm going to stick these onto the front. I really like that it looks nautical because of the shapes, but it doesn't add a ton of color, especially if you already have color. And this was the perfect addition to my parents' little mudroom off of their pool, and it was a great holder for the soap. I love using felt to create seasonal shapes for affordable and colorful additions to my decor. And I have done both strawberries and lemons. So for the strawberries, I just cut out some stencils on my Cricut machine. But if you don't have that, you could easily find a picture of a strawberry on Google Images and then just print it out to the size that you want, cut it out and you have a stencil that way as well. So there's a couple different ways to do this. And I decided to do both red felt as well as some fabric because you could do it a variety of different ways. Then I'm taking my little stencil piece for the leaves at the top and I'm cutting that out in a lighter green color. Then we're going to make these just like you would a pillow. We're going to glue around the outside, leave a little opening and then stuff it with leftover pillow fluff. If you've got polyfill, you could also use some Dollar Tree little cotton balls if you want. There's a lot of different options. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You just want to puff it up. And then we are going to add some hot glue to my leaf and then add it to the top of all of my little strawberries. These you can make in a variety of different shapes, colors, sizes, the sky's the limit. You could also make little teeny ones and put them up in a garland. You could do lemons like I'm doing here. Pineapples would be cute, limes. You could also cut out like a blue anchor and make a fun pillow like that. So a lot of these techniques you can definitely apply to whatever theme or themes that you use for your summer decor. 
So again, glue all around the outside with those two pieces that are the same size. Then we're gonna glue it. And then here, I'm just adding some leaves. Another quick thing you can add is some blanket stitching like we did on that blanket earlier. And all you need to do is just start on one side and go around the outside and this adds some fun whimsy to it as well. So this is another great thing to do while you are binging a show. And it's really nice for me. It's kind of like people use crocheting or other things to pass the time in Zen out. I like to add blanket stitches to things. This technique is also great to use with fabric in smaller sizes for tiered trays like I did here. You can just throw them in mugs, throw them in little containers, and they just add some fun whimsy to decor. If you have a mantle or shelf area that you wanna add some color to, this is for you. Grab three of these reform star shapes from Dollar Tree and just spray paint them red, white, and blue. Then all you need to do is stack them up together and they can add color on their own or they're also a great piece to stage behind some smaller items like I did with these houses. Quick and easy, super affordable. I really like having the metal texture incorporated into my decor. Every season, I try to do a Kirkland's or high-end dupe video, and this is one of my favorites from last year. They wanted $40 for a tray, and instead I found this one on clearance at Target in their craft section, but you can also find these at Michael's, Joann's, a ton of different places. I decided to stain it, and this is a friendly reminder to stir the stain before you put it on there, especially with gray stains like this, which is weathered oak, so then that way it is not leaving sediments or chunks of it that's not mixed up. It won't look that great. Then I cut out this stencil that is about lake days and sun rays. There's like a bunch of different rhymes on here. And I weeded it like a stencil so I could add it to the center. It was easy at, it was as easy as putting it onto some scrap vinyl. I love to do scrap permanent vinyl for stencils, applying it with my paper transfer tape. And then the first step to make sure it doesn't bleed on you is to seal it with a light coat of Mod Podge. Once that's done, I'm going through with a disposable makeup sponge in some navy blue paint to add the boat waves, sun rays, ain't nothing like lake days to this tray. I did two light coats and then once everything was kind of dry on the second coat, but still wet, you don't want it to be fully dry, I'm gonna peel it off carefully and remove all the little bits within each of the words. Then I thought this was a little bit blah like this, so I wanted to add some stripes down either side, just like the inspiration. And so when I wanna get straight lines, I just go ahead and use painter's tape. It makes life a lot easier and I just can't paint a straight line. So this really helps. I'm doing the same dabbing paint technique that I did before, and then you can remove those and do as many stripes as you want to get the look you're going for. I did a quick distress with some sandpaper just to kind of level everything out. And I also took a clean paper towel to wipe off any of the blue bits. Then to make the handles feel a little bit more nautical, I used some Dollar Tree, just cotton twine to wrap the handles. And this thing was good to go. These cute little anchors on the side that they're styled with is also from Dollar Tree. And this is just great for a little nook at a lake house or if you live on a lake full time, you could put whatever saying you want in the center or you could just paint the lines omit the words and do it without needing a stencil. Mine was six bucks, I saved 85%. I don't know what it is about outdoor patio stuff, but it always just adds up super fast. And so I decided to make these Kirkland dupes with these threshold placemats that I got for 250 each versus 50 bucks for a set of six. I started with some masking tape and I taped off where I wanted my stars and stripes to go. And then I decided to use spray paint to get the coloration on there. Now I got a lot of questions when I originally did this about, is it crunchy? It's not like the softest thing, like you're not gonna want to put your face on a pillow used with this technique, but it definitely is gonna work perfect for what we need is a placemat. So don't worry about the crunchiness. I used a divider and spray painted the one side red. So then that way I had my stripes with the tape. I peeled off all of my pieces here once it had dried to reveal my beautiful red side. And then I'm gonna take some more painter's tape just so it has a clean line between the red stripe and the blue. And then I'm gonna add some two inch little stars that I cut on Cricut sticky cardstock, but you could also cut it on regular paper and tape it down with some painter's tape and I'm gonna stick them down to create the star side of my placemat. Then we're gonna repeat the same step, but with some blue spray paint, give it a really good cover. And then when that's dry, you can peel off your little stars and then I reuse them on the additional placemats. I let them fully dry outside in the sun and then overnight to make sure they were good to go. 
And these make such a really fun patriotic addition to my porch. And you can also do these in traditional summer colors or even tie dye as well. This table runner definitely caught my eye and I wanted to dupe that as well from Kirkland's. And so I got this burlap table runner from Amazon for under $10. I measured each end so I knew how thick I wanted my star area to be and I ended up doing that 12 inches from the end. Then I made some more stars with sticky cardstock. Again, these are two inches wide and I applied them on either end. Then we're taking the same little priority mailbox I used to block it before and the exact same spray paint technique. In the future, I would probably have used a darker navy, but I do like the way the blue pops in the sunlight. We're gonna remove all of those little stars and once that's done on either end, I used some painter's tape to do some straight lines across the center. And I also painted off just right at the edge of that blue section to protect that from this round of spray paint. Once I got all of those pieces taped out, then I could go through with the red. I was able to make it in the colors that I wanted. And then I have a set of placemats and a table runner that match with the same color. It went really well on our outdoor table and it is a quick and easy way for Memorial Day, 4th of July, or even just the summer in general to add some patriotic and colorfulness to your patio. You could also do the stripes with a rainbow color for summer. That would be super fun. Or even like purples, oranges, yellows, summer sunshine colors. I love this so much. This patriotic planter would be a great project to do with kids. And all you need are some paint stir sticks. I ended up doing two packs of 10 and you're gonna need to make a front, a back and two sides. So for the front and back, you're gonna do six paint sticks. And then I'm just using some of these smaller craft sticks from Dollar Tree to hot glue as a brace to hold them all together. So once we have two of those six piece wide pieces, then we're gonna do one four piece wide and then make another one. So you've got two six wides and two four wides. Then I'm gluing on some Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks to act as a gripper. And it took me a little bit of trial and error, but I ended up gluing them onto the sides of the four pieces. And then I can use the other side of that little Jenga tumbling tower piece to glue it to the other side. So it's kind of a brace on both sides. And then once all of my hot glue was cooled and set, I painted the entire thing white. Then it was time to add the stars and stripes. So I started at the bottom and taped off even one inch painter's tape lines. And I went all the way up to about where I thought my stars should start. And then I taped off that section. The goal here is to make it look like a flag was essentially wrapped around the planter. And so I just did kind of the front and the side would be blue. And then the rest would be the stripes that you would see if the flag was wrapping around. I painted all of those openings red and then I removed all that painter's tape and then moved it just so I could protect the red stripes so I could paint the open section blue. Now here there's two different ways you could do it. You could easily add just some little decals onto there of the white stars, but I decided to create a stencil and then paint them on. I just wanted the whole thing to be painted without any like stickers on there in case I put it outside. I didn't want the heat to mess with the vinyl at all. I made all my little stars painted on and then I just removed my stencil versus sticking on the decal, but you could easily do decals as well. And once that was done, it was good to go. If you're gonna put it outside, I would suggest doing a sealant, but you could easily then put a vase inside for some real flowers. This would look beautiful with hydrangeas or tulips, or you can do what I did and use faux flowers and just stick them right inside. If you're headed to a Memorial Day barbecue, these patriotic cake trays are perfect. These come from the entertaining section at Dollar Tree, just popped off the stickers and then got to work taping them off. So for the stripe one, I am using two pieces of painter's tape thick to create some thicker red and white stripes. And then I also use some tape to help me with the placement. And then for the stars, I'm just using some more of those little Cricut stickers. I just cut a huge sheet of them and used a bunch of them at once. And we're going to stick them down, making sure that we're aware of the grooves so that everything gets pushed down so there's no gaps. Then we're going to start on the stripes and we're going to paint the entire thing red. And then we're going to take some deep blue spray paint and do the stars. 
Then what we're gonna do is remove all of those painter's tape, stickers and all, and then we're gonna go over both of them with the white. So then that way the stars are white and the open stripes are white. These would be great for a dessert table. You could put cookies or cupcakes on there, or these are perfect with chargers on your table if you just want a decorative tablescape. Tons of different options, quick and easy, super fun and festive. If you're a Tom Petty fan or like to decorate with patriotic decor, you will love this project. So it starts with a five by seven canvas and we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pop up all of these staples and then a set of pliers or whatever you have to grab those and pull them out so we can remove the canvas. Then I'm going to do a faux stain to the outside of the frame. You could stain it, you could paint it, but I'm just using some antique wax to get a quicker dry time than traditional stain. Then I cut out this fun lyric sign SVG file that I created so it's over on my blog for you. Just click the link down in the description. I also have a tutorial video on how to access my files if you are having issues or have questions. It says she's a good girl, loves her mama, loves Jesus and America too. And so I sized it to fit within the frame. I'm just pressing it on like I would any heat transfer vinyl onto that piece of backing that I had before. And then it's as simple as either stapling it on or you can also use hot glue to rehook it to your frame. After any last minute quick trims, this is ready to go to add a ton of patriotic and also some rock and roll to your summer decor. That's gonna do it for this video. It was chock full of so much inspiration. So be sure to let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite because all that info helps me pick projects for future videos. I'm already hard at work on my next DIY video for the Craft Buddies. So make sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss it when that goes live. And I will catch you guys in the next one.